Exploil's remote controller is ergonomically designed for both right-handed and left-handed users. To turn on the remote, press and hold the middle power button for 5 seconds. The Exploil splash screen will display to show that the remote is starting up. After startup, the remote will automatically start searching for Exploil's board. If the remote's trigger range has not yet been calibrated, it will take you to the calibration screen. Fully press the trigger all the way down, then press the up button. Fully release the trigger, then press the up button. Check the trigger range from 0 to 100%. If you're satisfied with the calibration, press the up button to save. To redo, press the down button. The remote will automatically begin searching for any XFOIL boards in range. If the board has already been paired with the remote, it will automatically establish a secure connection and display the home screen. The ESC or Electronic Speed Control Bluetooth Connect LED will also illuminate to indicate that the remote is connected to the board. If the remote has not yet been paired, the Bluetooth Connect LED will momentarily light up and then turn off to indicate that it was unable to establish a secure connection. To pair the remote with the board, power on the X-Foil by connecting the battery terminals. Place X-Foil in a vertical position. It's not necessary to have the mast installed during this operation. As long as the board is vertical, meaning the nose is pointing up, the board is ready to pair a new remote. The remote will automatically search for X-Foil, and once paired, you will hear three beeps from the ESC to indicate that pairing has been successful. Up to 10 remotes can be paired per board. The remote will then take you to the home screen, and the Bluetooth Connect LED will illuminate to indicate that it is connected with the board. Move Exfoil out of this position or disconnect the battery to avoid the possibility of other Exfoil remotes that may be in range from accidentally pairing with your board. The home screen shows the board's main battery level and voltage, motor's thrust percentage, board pitch angle, remote's battery level, and the ESC temperature. When thrust power is indicated as a horizontal line as shown, this means that the motor is off and will not respond to any user input. This is highly important to know for your safety. From the home screen, three functions are available. Setup, power off, and motor on. Let's go into setup. Press and hold the down arrow button to enter the setup screen. The down button toggles between the available options, and the up button changes the selection. Each XFOIL board stores up to four user profiles. Press the select button to switch between users. Each user will automatically adjust the subsequent fields according to their saved values. The mode field adjusts the presets for peak power, acceleration curve, and safety cutoff to the recommended settings for the riding style. You can override the power, acceleration curve, and safety by toggling to that parameter you wish to change. Press the middle power button to save and exit. Units adjust the temperature display on the main screen to show Fahrenheit or Celsius. Peak power sets the maximum output power of the motor. Excel sets the trigger sensitivity with respect to the motor's thrust. Early L means early acceleration sensitivity is low. Late H means late sensitivity acceleration is high. L, M, and H means low, medium, and high. We recommend that you try different sensitivity settings to determine the best throttle curve for your riding style. Also, please consult the XFOIL user manual for a graphical representation of the curves. To turn the motor on, press and hold the up button. You will hear a two-second beep to indicate that the motor is on. Notice that the horizontal line has been replaced with a percentage number. Pull the trigger to start accelerating. To put XFOIL into cruise control mode where you can take your finger off the trigger while motor thrust power is held at a constant specific setting, press the trigger button to achieve your desired thrust level. Then press the up button. The display will automatically change from thrust to cruise. While in cruise mode, press and hold the up button to increase thrust. Press and hold the down button to decrease thrust. 
To go back to trigger mode, pull the trigger past your thrust setting and the screen will change back from cruise to thrust. While in trigger mode or cruise mode, press the power button to instantly shut down the motor. If you're about to fall from the board, press the power button to shut down the motor. We recommend three consecutive taps when falling. This is a good habit to develop and practice to maximize your safety. To turn off the remote, press and hold the power button. To charge the remote's battery, plug in the wireless charger to any USB-C power supply and mate the charging cable to the front of the remote. If the remote is already powered on, a lightning symbol will appear on the battery icon on the top right of the screen to indicate that the remote is charging. If the remote is powered off, press the power button momentarily once. The charging screen will appear to indicate that the remote is charging. The state of charge is displayed on the small battery icon on the top right of the screen. The remote can operate up to 32 consecutive hours on a single charge and be stored up to one year while off. It takes 8 to 10 hours to charge from an empty battery to 100% full.